Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 488, Robotic Hysterectomy, an interview with Dr. Gigi Streif. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we are uh, honored to have Dr. Gigi Strife, a very good friend of mine for years, who is a gynecologic surgeon and who has just retired. So we got to capture some of her time. She was too busy before, I'm sure. Uh, but she is, has a specialty that I was never trained in. And this specialty is a special type of hysterectomy, removal of the uterus or the uterus tubes and ovaries in a different way than has ever been performed before. Now this procedure is quite different, so you're gonna to have to explain what it is and explain the advantages and, and any disadvantages, but this might be helpful for some of our patients who are looking at what kind of hysterectomy they need and what they should talk to their doctor about. I can't tell you that every doctor can do this because they can't, I didn't. I didn't do this procedure. It's a very specialized procedure that only a few doctors who are found on the Da Vinci website. Yes. Um, that's, that's the name of one of the procedures or one of the companies that, that uh, provides the instrumentation for this. So could you tell us what exactly a, a robotic or Da Vinci hysterectomy is? Okay. So for some background, basically, um, we need to know, or you need to know, that the Food and Drug Administration did approve um, robotic surgery for the urologist in 1999. And it was in 2005 where finally they approved it for gynecologists and cardiac surgeons as well. Mm -hmm. So the reason for robotic surgery is fairly specific. Not everyone should have one just because they want one, mm -hmm. okay? True. It's much better if you've had some sort of um, situation such as endometriosis, severe endometriosis, mm -hmm. um, cancer, mm -hmm. and possibly infertility type of surgery mm -hmm. so that um, a surgeon's able to see the actual uterus and tubes and ovaries in a close-up view. So this is, tell me, just explain what a normal hysterectomy is. Okay. Just a, a normal abdominal or a normal vaginal hysterectomy and then how this is different. Okay. So abdominal surgery, of course, means that, you know, you're under anesthesia and you're going to have a small incision and the incision is based on the size of your uterus as well as the um, number of surgeries that you've had. Mm -hmm. And so your abdomen is open and we're able to... Um, insert instruments that way and um, making sure that we're attaching the instruments to the proper anatomy. We so, can see it and move yeah, around. Yeah, you can see it. it. Right. That's what I liked about doing right. that type of surgery is yeah. I could feel, right. feel the uterus tubes right. and ovaries and actually clamp right next to them. Correct. So that's abdominal or open surgery. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the prerequisites of learning um, to do robotic surgery is that you have to be trained in abdominal surgery. Right. So... Which then, is great. Then vaginal you, hysterectomy. Then vaginal hysterectomies is, of course, the um, mode of the situation is that your um, uterus is removed vaginally and you are placed in stirrups. And um, again, the instruments are placed in a position where sometimes there's no incision at all on the abdomen, but sometimes mm -hmm. there is. But um, you place the instruments, again, accordingly to the anatomy, remove the uterus. Through the vagina. Yeah, through so the vagina, that, right. So it kind of is, yeah. it kind of is like the uterus moves towards you as you yeah. clamp, clamp, clamp. Correct. Correct. And then the vagina is closed. Yes. Correct. And then the uterus is, is out. Correct. And there's no, no, no incision unless there, there are reasons to look above yes. with a laparoscope. Correct. So then that brings us to laparoscopic surgery. Mm -hmm. 
So that was the, I guess, the latest thing prior to robotic surgery, mm -hmm. where a patient is, um, again, under anesthesia, and smaller incisions are placed. So you mm -hmm. have these long instruments that are inserted mm -hmm. through the small incisions, and we're able to actually um, place cameras into these um, laparoscopic instruments. Mm -hmm. We watch on a monitor, then we're able to do the procedure with the help of the monitor and the instruments. It takes a lot of dexterity. Oh. And, and it took, in tr we were trained in this many, 30, 40 years ago when it first started being done. And you'd have to look up at the monitor, but you're operating here. And this was like the advent of the first step toward robotic surgery. Absolutely. Where you're not looking into the patient or into the vagina in the patient to, to actually look at what you're doing, but you're looking at a screen yes. and doing things here. It's almost yeah. like video game. Yeah. Uh, but but for those of us who didn't grow up with video games, it was a whole new a whole new way to operate, Correct. and that was the first step toward robotic surgery. But it, is. it gave us the advantage of not causing uh, a lot of scarring and using tiny little scissors yeah. and and lasers and right. and we didn't damage, we didn't cause adhesions. Less that blood was, loss, yeah. Less adhesions and people went back to work faster. Yeah. Better recovery time. Mm -hmm. So, so we're getting better at, with each step. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So with robotic surgery, what it is is that the same instruments are placed. So you have a team of, um, of rob it's a robotic team. So basically you have your nurses, your assistant, the anesthesiologist, and the surgeon. You place the instruments in the small incisions like you always did. They're kind of like yeah. one in the belly button and a couple yeah. here. Correct. Mm -hmm. Usually four, sometimes mm -hmm. five. And you're placed in a certain position so that um, the robot's able to maneuver around the patient. Mm -hmm. So the laparoscope is then attached to these um, little robotic hands. That's what you're looking through. Yeah. And well, what comes up on not, the screen? Not quite. They're, they're attached to the laparoscope. Mm -hmm. Then once everything's attached, you have an assistant with an assistant port. Mm -hmm. And then I basically scrub out of the field and walk over to a console. A computer. Yeah, right. So the console has, um, you know, you the camera, and then what also happens is that um, you see a three-dimensional image. It's like looking straight into someone's belly. It is mm -hmm. amazing. You that just, is amazing. It is. It is. It's like you can't even believe that you can see all that you see. So see that's behind things yeah, and around things. Yeah, and that's the beauty of that type of surgery, and that's why it's important to do this procedure over and over and over again, and know again abdominal surgery mm -hmm. as well as just laparoscopic surgery in general. So then what happens is that you, you, I place my hands into these um, little tiny, um, like a driver, and you will, you will be, the driver is then attached to these wristed instruments. Mm -hmm. So the instruments inside move in accordance mm -hmm. with your hands, which is so fascinating because if you make a tiny little move, the robot actually is synchronized. Mm -hmm. And you could do this at long distance, actually. If you had somebody else set up... Um, at, you, at some point, at I some think, point, yeah, at they some would point. be able yeah, to do like that. Uh, they'll that's be part the of telemedicine mm -hmm. and, and consultation. And I think that's the future. Mm -hmm. So, but, that, but this is... Tell me why it's better for a patient. Why, why would a patient need this kind of setup? Because the setup is... Uh, it's a more expensive setup. It's, it's very complicated. Expensive. There's yes. a lot of people involved. Yes. Why and it, I think I believe it takes longer than yes. just opening up a patient, taking the yes. uterus out, and yeah. closing. Right. So why would a patient need this? The first time that I started doing the surgery, it was on patients with severe endometriosis, and when you have that much scar tissue, it's so much better if you can actually see things right in front of you, mm -hmm. and it's. When I say three dimensional, when you know you actually can see into the belly that way. Normally, yeah. we're up here, right. looking down. This yeah. is bringing you right, right. down exactly. on that little tiny. Right. So endometriosis is little implants of tissue that every month bleed inside your abdomen and cause terrific pain, and then they scar. Yes. So they scar up your bowel, they scar up your your bladder and your uh, and your uterus tubes and ovaries. 
So you have to go in and not only get rid of those little implants, but you have to get rid of the scar tissue, right. which can be with really delicate, I mean, they're between bowel and bowel yes. and bowel and tube. Right. So you have to be very careful. It has to be, it has to be microns that you're cutting. And that's what is great about the robot. That's what helps you. So you're able to hopefully decrease the amount of bleeding and the amount of possible um, situations damage. where, yeah, damage to bowel mm -hmm. or the bladder, mm -hmm. the ureter, all the things that we talk about in laparoscopic mm -hmm. surgery. When we say, oh, these are the things that could happen yeah. if you have a hysterectomy, and they usually are a list of damage to bowel, bladder, yeah. um, entry into the bowel, um, bleeding, infection, this decreases the risk of everything. It can, but still, if there are there still is, risks, yeah, there's still risks, and and if there is a, a situation that may have bleeding, then you have to be trained to be able to open that patient. Right. Yeah. Well, you have to do all of these surgeries. Correct. It's like you start with the open, right. open type of hysterectomy to when learn. you're learning, yeah. and then that's the easiest. Yeah. And then you go, you progress. Right. And I was never trained in robotic right. surgery because I wasn't doing surgery at the time that it became popular and, and you have to go through special training. Yes. So I wanted to, I really wanted to know about the special training. Okay, so now they actually, there's actually a lab that you go to and the one I went to was in Florida. Mm -hmm. So you practice on actually animals mm -hmm. and we used um, fetal pigs under anesthesia. I don't recall if they were fetal, but they were smaller Small pigs. pigs. So you would learn how to use the instruments. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're not going to be trained on what the anatomy is. It was is. humane. Completely different. It Very was humane. Thing. They're yeah. asleep. Very they don't feel thing. anything. Correct. This is not something that is traumatizing yes. an animal. But just so you know, because yes. I don't want you to think we would right. do that. So it's, it's learning the technology. Mm -hmm. And you do it over and over again so you get used to how to slowly move the instruments. Muscle memory is everything in yeah, this. Yes, it is. And it is. and uh, and and doing things over. It's just like any other surgery. Correct. Doing things over and over and over again is what's really important yes. in surgery, so that you don't even have to think anymore. You can just do it. Your mind and your hands are one, and that's what the, practicing like this is important for. It is. So you so. have the um, teaching of you know the didactic training, the teaching of technology. Mm -hmm. Then once that happens then you do get trained by a proctor. Mm -hmm. so, so that means there's yeah, a surgeon there. There's a surgeon, and so during that time, you will watch the surgeon perform the surgery, and then it's sort of like, you know, he's teaching you or she's teaching you what the actual situation is. They might be doing the surgery, and then you're able to help them. You mm -hmm. put your hands on the instruments, and of course, the patient is told, you know, I have... A person that I'm training today, and so they get full informed consent. So this is switched from animals to people. Correct. Right, and that's Correct. how all training is in yes. medicine. You have you learn by watching, then you learn by helping, then you're released once you're once you're very good at this, then you're released to yes. do it on your own. Correct. And it takes years to go through it that does. process. And so with this situation, um, you should be able to do the surgery with the proctor. And there are several times, and, and each institution now, each hospital, has to sort of do their own thing, because this is so new moving forward. The robotic surgeries have been increasing like 25% per year. Mm -hmm. And so when you're trained, it's really important to make sure that you understand all of the technology. And once you have that down, then you, you know, you're going to have to do it on your first patient. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you're there with a proctor. And then they're watching you Yeah, now. they're watching us. And they and will so, bail you out if something yes, is, is really difficult. Yeah. So that's another thing that we do. Yeah. You may not know that in medicine, but we do that. That's how we are released to do things on our own as residents, as chief residents. Right. Is they watch us and make sure that we're competent. And then they Correct. allow us and to so, do that. And um, so there are more residency programs that are training now. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Is. So this is now part of a normal training instead of something completely extra that you would do on top of your training. Yes. 
for some of the institutions, not all. Mm -hmm. Not everyone, not all the med schools have robotic surgeons. Mm -hmm. So there's a minimally invasive gynecological um, specialty now. And that's how, that's well, part that of it. That used to be re reproductive health, used to be infertility, and min it was really minimally invasive surgery, but you would have an open abdomen and you're, and when I trained, you'd have a doctor with a microscope mm -hmm. basically looking at, at the tubes and ovaries and releasing them mm -hmm. with his hands, not with a robot, Correct. but he, and it was always a he. So, I mean, at that time, and you'd look, it wasn't as, it wasn't as accurate. It wasn't yes. as perfect. And it, tr anytime you open the abdomen, you're traumatizing the abdomen. Yes. And so you have a risk of cutting adhesions, getting rid of them. And adhesions are like scar tissue that hurt when you move and they prevent you from getting pregnant. So that, so we try to get rid of all of that. But if you open an abdomen, you get rid of adhesions, you make more. There's very little way to open an abdomen with an incision and not get more adhesions. Right. So we're, advi we're avoiding all of that with this procedure. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Again, um, nothing's nothing, perfect. Right, nothing's perfect. But nothing's this is a risk. better way. Yeah. It's a better way for specific types of situations. Well, and so, so that's, like I said, severe endometriosis may be one, cancer, of course. So you have to yeah. go get the yeah. lymph nodes from the, the back. Yes. Lymph nodes are along your backbone, so you have to go all the way through the abdomen, open up the, the peritoneum that's over the lymph nodes, and then and then biopsy them. So this would be perfect for that because it is. That's, a, that's a very tedious and very delicate procedure, and it would make it much more accurate. So that's one of the most um, used ways for robotic surgery now is staging for cancer. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, which I helped in several times, well, hundreds of times, was when you actually have pelvic floor relaxation. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? It's, I know it's a terrible thing to talk about, but after several babies are born, some of us women are genetically predisposed to your uterus falling out. I mean, it was out so, the vagina. Yeah, out the vagina. And bladder falls out, yeah. the rectum falls out, the it's uterus just, falls it's out. It's very um, scary for women. Mm -hmm. They're embarrassed. So it causes you know, bladder incontinence. Yeah. So that's what most patients come to me for. Mm -hmm. They'll say, oh my gosh, I was playing golf and all of a sudden, boom, and I felt this thing drop. That was mm -hmm. one of my patients. Mm -hmm. So she came very running good. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She came tell, running tell in. Tell us about her. Yeah. So she came running in, she says, I can't live this way. I'm 60 something years old, mm -hmm. I'm a, I love golf, mm -hmm. and something has to be done. So luckily, or wonderfully, um, there are urogynecological surgeons or, and or a urologist that's trained in robotic surgery and a gynecologist work together. Mm -hmm. And we would do something called a supracervical hysterectomy, mm -hmm. where I would do the first procedure, removing the uterus above, I mean, at the cervix area, mm -hmm. and removing the tubes and ovaries if needed. How'd you get it out? Yeah. Oh, How'd very good question. So, Because you've got little tiny little yeah, holes. Right. Before, we were able to use the morselator. Unfortunately, Tell now... Tell us what a morselator yeah, so is. Yes, the morselator is like this... Um, Oh, goodness. Corkscrew. Yeah, it is. It's like a corkscrew, and it has a rotating blade, mm -hmm. and you remove the uterus in pieces through a the, tiny yeah, incision. Usually mm -hmm. the umbilicus mm -hmm. or your belly button, because that's usually it stretches and it's mm -hmm. more forgiving, mm -hmm. and you can repair it mm -hmm. through that. So, in patients with um, a dropped uterus, most of the time the uterus is very small. Mm -hmm. So, at the end of the procedure, after the urologist is finished, basically lifting the, yeah, bladder, lifting up. the bladder and the um, rest of the vagina up, mm -hmm. then we can just remove it. We put it usually in a surgical bag, mm -hmm. and then we, we remove it through the belly button. It just so, pulls right out. So you put the bag in. Yeah. The bag, right. I know what the, because we've yes, done this with laparoscopes. The bag opens up. It has kind of a little, um, it's like a metal yes. kind of thing or a drawstring. You put the, you, with these little pinchers, you yeah. put the uterus in yeah. there, pull the string on, right. and then pull it up to the belly button and just pull it through the belly button. Yeah. Kind of and like you do a gallbladder through right. a laparoscope. So that's where your surgical assist is so important because mm -hmm. they can follow you and watch you. And as you're doing the procedure, 
They're cleaning up all around the field. This is so not a one see. person deal. Oh my gosh, absolutely This is not. a big team. Yeah, it is, and that's why it's so expensive. It is that's expensive. That's why you don't want to do, um, you don't want to do hysterectomy just because you want it as a robotic procedure. Right, right. This is an indicated procedure. It's it something is. that your doctor may or may not offer to you if they don't know how to do it. Yes. That's why we're talking about it today, because if you do have endometriosis or uh, you need to have your uh, staging for cancer, or if you have infertility, this might be the best procedure for you, but your doctor may not bring it up because they aren't proficient in it or they haven't learned to do it and they don't know who does it. So they just say, well, let's just do this other procedure. So that's why we want you to know what a robotic surgery is and why you would have it. We also want you to know that there are doctors like Dr. Strife throughout the country who do this and are proficient in it and that she can actually work. I mean, I think that's an amazing procedure for lifting up the, the vagina and oh the bladder gosh. because that's a very, that's a huge procedure if you do it from below. This would heal so much better. It does. And patients are go home in 23 hours. That's amazing. Yeah, so instead of like a full Days. day where, you know, your insurance covers very little of it. Yes, so when you say it's a 20, well, not when you say it is a 23-hour observation, mm -hmm. the patient goes home, mm -hmm. sees the urologist, sees me like, you know. Six weeks? Yeah, two to four weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's it. many times they're playing golf within two months. And, yeah, and you have to wait six yeah, weeks. Exactly. You can't do, because it's still surgery and you still have to heal and it still takes six weeks to heal. Yeah. So you can't play golf in two weeks. You can't go lift weights in two weeks. And that's the other thing. You still have to protect your pelvis. Oh, yes. Yes, you do. Because suture is not as good as what God gave you in the beginning before you had kids. So we, we always still have to protect our pelvis and not lift heavy things. However, if you do and you have this problem, this is... That's one of the biggest advantages of the of the robotic slash da Vinci surgery. So where did you say people can look for a doctor who does who does this type of procedure? So you can look um, the da Vinci. There's actually a da Vinci um, website, and of course each hospital will also have their websites, mm -hmm. and you can look and. It'll, so it'll be, the doctors be will be Da yeah. Vinci robotic surgery or yeah. Da Vinci hysterectomy. Correct. So you could look those up um, and uh, search for those and find their website, and then they'll have a list of doctors throughout the country that you can pick from if you want to go talk to them about it. You may not be a candidate, but if you think you are, this would be something that you should at least have an option for. Yes. Because this is the advantage is less time out of work, less time out of play less time out of your life. I mean, you'll still be under anesthesia, but less l blood loss, less scarring. I mean, all of those things matter. They don't matter when you're going in for surgery, they matter later. And it's very important to think about those things because you don't want to regret how you had your hysterectomy. Exactly, exactly. So Dr. Strife, thank yeah. you so much. Oh my gosh, it's And we'll an have honor. you back <laughs> to talk about other things that well, you are an expert in. I, I would be more than glad to. Thank you very much. My we pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.